what is up guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing here a deck profile for tgs this has been quite a long time i've actually have not done any deck profiles for tgs for about two years now i think uh, i have actually profiled this before on the channel but back then it was just so outdated i believe at least compared to the one i have right now because there are quite a few new cards here but if you guys want to check out the old video I will put an annotation just above on the right corner so definitely uh, take a look at that but you know that's more so if you want to get familiar with the particular combos which I will not be recovering or redoing today uh, given that no purpose of today's deck profile is meant to be for everyone who really already knows how to play it but really just wants to have a guideline for what to build in this particular format. So with that being said, I'm really excited now to have this particular new build here to show off because it's just something that I think is really fun. Um, obviously it has no chance against a lot of those new decks out there. I mean, with the release of Power of the Elements, you are definitely going to be facing a lot of different decks out there that are just so crazy. It's going to definitely shape up the meta. But here with TGs, we're purely just going to have fun. So hopefully it serves the purpose with this particular profile so with that being said uh there's really not much else to say but to get started so to begin we're going to be playing here three copies of our tg screw serpent this is one of the most key cards for the actual deck itself it definitely just starts you off so well here and i believe it's definitely a three of next up for a bit of additional plays to supplement our combos we're going to be playing here three copies of the boost the raptor this is also a really crucial card it uh, just special summons itself out really easily of course to give you an additional card to go for your potential link summon or maybe even your synchro summons but with that being said the most important thing here is that it is a dinosaur card which makes it really searchable and just easy to pull off we're also going to be playing two copies here of TG Tank Grub. Now, I used to play three copies of this, if you guys actually remembered my previous build, and that might have been the case if you were looking at it maybe uh, not too long ago as well, actually. Just a few months ago, I would have probably played three, but I feel like this card has kind of just served its purpose for the previous formats and right now it just doesn't do too much on its own at best it would be a one for one target but i don't even bother playing one for one at this point in this deck because it just requires you to get rid of cards or resources from your hand and i'd much rather keep it at best this particular card here is more so just an additional card that allows you to generate an additional token but even so it does kind of take up your normal summon which is something that i don't really want to see too often happen Happen, so I dropped this down to two copies. However, moving back to three copies, we're going to be playing three copies here of the TG Warwolf. Definitely a really good card. It's a beast warrior, which makes it incredibly searchable with the uh, fire formation tanky. So that's definitely fantastic. But with that being said, it also special summons itself out really easily. So why not play three of it? Moving on, we're going to be playing three copies here of TG Striker. It is a tuna, it special summons itself quite easily, not as easy as Warwolf, but even so, it definitely does a great job starting you off with your plays here. Given it is a warrior, you could also play Rota in this particular deck, though I personally don't play it. Uh, it's just something that uh, you could just add in in addition to it. I mean, what I'd do is I'd probably take out one copy, play only two, and then add in an actual copy of uh, Rota into the deck. However, with this particular build, I tried it out at locals one time and uh, I was just dealing with a lot of people who were playing uh, the, uh, what was it, like Secret Village of the Spellcasters, which was definitely really detrimental to this particular deck. So rather than playing uh, more spell cards in this deck, I actually focused to go on more monsters and as a result, I chose not to play Rota, but you could easily just swap it out for one of those. Next up, we have here our Rush Rhino. Sometimes you just want to have an easy beat stick to get over some monsters. I mean, this essentially becomes a 2k beat stick. It's really well worth it. It's an amazing card. And even so, TGs all have the effect, well, at least the old ones do, where if they just got destroyed on the field and is sent to the graveyard, then during the end phase, you just add another TG monster anyway. So definitely well worth it. 
Moving on, we're playing here three copies of TG Gear Zombie. Now, last time I don't believe I actually included this in the deck, and if I did, I probably only had one copy. However, I managed to get three copies of this, which is definitely fantastic, but this is just something that is really fantastic because it summons itself out so easily just because it depletes the actual attack points of your other monster that doesn't really matter you're going for your link summons you're going for your big synchro plays as a result three copies of the tg gear zombie is definitely fantastic uh, also like the fact that this is actually a secret rare as well so it's just really nice for the deck However, moving on, we're playing two copies here of the TG Metal Skeleton. Definitely a fantastic card. Uh, obviously, it does require a certain condition to be met for it to summon it itself out, but even so, uh, two copies is definitely fantastic. And I want to actually just talk alongside this with the TG Trillfish, since they're both technically just part of the same set anyway. But even so, they both are uh, something I consider to be two ofs. You could potentially drop down the Drillfish down to one copy if you actually want to, but at least for me, I'm pretty content with uh, the particular ratios I have over here. Now, for the non-TG monsters, we're gonna be playing here three copies of Red Resonator. This might seem like a bit overkill for people, but for me at least, it generates extra monsters with its own effect, and it's also searchable as well with a card we'll get to later on. But for the time being, it is well worth the normal summon if it means getting an extra monster from your hand that can't be brought out by normal means. So in this case, you could actually just summon out the TG Drillfish via the Red Resonator. That way you don't actually have to go from the normal summon of the Drillfish instead. So it does depend, but this card definitely does help out. And of course, it should come to no surprise that we're gonna be playing three copies here of our Michelaniosaurus. Definitely fantastic here. Just allows you to go for your Booster Raptor, also very searchable. Uh, you could potentially drop this down to one copy if you actually want to. I mean, it's not absolutely crucial, but I figured I may as well just play three because, you know, worst case scenario, uh, it's the same reason why I'm playing the Rush Rhino with the Michelaniosaurus. They're both big beat sticks. Sometimes you just need that beat stick. So knowing that sometimes you just need that extra easy beat stick to get over things. And the Michelaniosaurus and the Rush Rhinos definitely do the job here. Now, moving on to the spells, we're going to be playing two tanky. Uh, it's still fine that at least we could search out our War Wolf. Should not come to a surprise that we're going to be playing two copies of Resonator Core, an absolutely fantastic card to add your Resonator. And with that being said, there's really not much else there. It's just absolutely consistent. And of course, given that we're playing the Booster Raptors and also the Michelaniosaurus, we're going to be playing three copies here of our Fossil Dig. It's not even hard once per turn. You can activate all three if you actually want to. So you're potentially just deck thinning, and that's like nine cards out of your entire deck that you could just deck thin with the Fossil Dig. Uh, definitely fantastic there. And of course, I also wanted to include here two copies of Desynchro. I think this is something that I consider to be a bit of a tech for the actual deck itself. Definitely a fantastic card to use. And this is something that's definitely really underestimated. I mean, TGs themselves, we have TG Hyper Librarian, and we could easily go into a Formula Synchron. So imagine the amount of draw power you could actually get with this particular deck. As you could already tell, the way this deck actually works, just by seeing the cards alone, is focused entirely on consistency and also just depleting the cards in your actual deck itself by drawing into things as much as possible. That way you could actually just get all your resources, dump them all onto the field and try to win within the first few turns because frankly this deck doesn't really do well in the long run. You can't really top deck with this particular deck because it's dependent on more than one card to execute its combos and therefore you just really want to draw out everything you can in the earliest turns possible. Finally, we're going to be playing here two copies of the Sonic Stun. Now, I know this might seem a bit counterintuitive to the whole thing I actually went on about just then, where we're actually just trying to win the game early on, but you know, sometimes you do get bad draws in the opening hands, just sometimes, not all the time, so having that Sonic Stun there to somehow potentially just also lock out your opponent's boards it's definitely really nice here. It's just a small disruptor that I find to be uh, quite fantastic there. So with that being said, these two cards are definitely great. You could also just switch them out and play uh, a different card instead. Uh, let me just uh, quickly take a look at it or bring it up here. Uh, it would be the TG1 
uh, EM1. So this card essentially allows you to swap your monsters with your opponent's monsters. And I think this would actually work quite well actually here because aside from the Sonic Stuns, uh, by putting this in instead, you could kind of deal with your opponent's artifact scythe. They're going to be locking out your extra deck, so in this particular circumstance, uh, what you would do is you'd switch out your weaker TG monsters and take their stronger monsters, and essentially from there just beat over them, which is an alternate option to playing it. So it's interchangeable, you could play Sonic Stun, you could play TG1 EM1, uh, either way, both are definitely fantastic choices. Of course, before I get into the extra deck, I would like to mention cards like 1 for 1, Monster Reborn, World Legacy Succession, uh, cards like Reinforcement of the Army, they all help for this particular deck as well, so don't hesitate to play it, and that way you could actually just maximise more on consistency, although given that I am dealing with a Locals that frequently plays cards such as Secrets, Village of the Spellcasters, I would rather focus more on my monsters than the spells. So it's entirely up to you how you adjust your deck. Because ultimately, this is a quite a flexible deck anyway. But moving on to the extra deck, we're going to be playing one of our new additions to this particular deck. We are playing here our Shooting uh, Star Dragon TGEX. This is definitely a really fantastic card. I unfortunately couldn't add it into the deck last time, but this time we do actually have it here. So that's definitely fantastic. It's just one of your big beat sticks, your big boss monsters that you ultimately want to bring out, but it is not crucial for you to actually OTK your opponent, you can do that via other means as well. Of course, it should come to no surprise that this deck has one of the crucial cards here, TG Trident Launcher. It is an insanely easy card to actually pull from the set that it actually comes in, so I'm sure anyone would easily get this. It's a readily accessible card, it's worth about maybe $3 each. So it shouldn't be too hard to obtain these, but definitely playing two copies of this. It starts you off so well for your combos, allowing you to just go into such big monsters with it being a 2200 beat stick itself, allowing you to get in extra damage onto your opponents in the early run. Next up, we're playing a few more big beat sticks or big boss monsters. That would be the Halberd Cannon and also the Blade Blasters. Uh, these cards are absolutely fantastic for the deck. They're easy to go into given that you could easily do some XL synchros. But with that being said, if you are able to pull off these particular cards here, you could definitely just uh, make yourself in this really optimistic situation where your opponent really will have a hard time trying to get over it. Surprisingly, you don't really see too many kaijus these days. You're just seeing mostly people trying to bring out big monsters, and this is something that's quite common with the Despia deck. They're trying to bring out these monsters that have like 3,000 attack and everything, and while I might struggle with other decks, as long as you have these cards already out on the board, how are they really going to get over you? They don't actually have too many options to get over this aside from using a kaiju or really specific cards that specifically focus on popping. But aside from that, if they're bringing out just their big monsters, they actually can't get over 3300 or even 4000, which are really big beat six. And of course, for some really obvious options, we're going to be playing our Star Guardians, we're going to be playing our TG Hyper Librarians, we're going to be playing here our Wonder Magician. These cards are pretty much just standard. Wonder Magician also allows you to do some XL Synchro plays as well, with Star Guardian being its own right, its own form of an XL Synchro. So definitely really fantastic for the deck itself. And a few supporters, we're going to be playing here our Power Gladiator and our Recipro Dragonfly. Both are also really amazing, allowing you to potentially go into your big monsters and given that they're not turners um, you would actually be able to do it with the um, wonder magician as as well as the star guardian which are both turners so allowing you to go for your excel synchros level 10 or even level 12 and of course it should come to no surprise we're playing here the formula synchron definitely fantastic you can make some great combos with the tg hype librarian and allow yourself to draw so many cards for your actual deck itself and hopefully you guys actually enjoyed this particular deck profile do let me know how you guys might alter your particular plays here of course i kind of learned that when it comes to building a deck you really just got to go with something that is uh catered towards your particular locals that you go and frequent at you know i doubt you guys would be dealing with some secret village of the spellcasters so you wouldn't have to worry about spells you can add in plenty of other spell cards to support this deck 
Uh, you could also go up against some local people who don't really play Despias as much, and as a result, you don't really have to go for your big boss monsters, so you could kind of alter the cards in your extra deck a bit as well. But this is kind of the build I'm going with just to stand a chance against my locals that I actually frequent. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile. And yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think about this. Drop a like, subscribe, and share this video as it will definitely help out a lot for this channel. But with that being said, hope to see you in the next video. I'll see you next time.